guys, welcome back to the Recovery Lab for another episode of Session Sit-In. I apologize for the long delay between videos, but we've got something really cool for you today. We're gonna actually expand from our manual therapy treatments, which you guys are typically accustomed to with the Session Sit-In videos, and we're gonna bring it outside into the training center and show you the corrective strategy that's gonna pair with uh, today's manual session. So hopefully some of you guys that have been following the channel for a bit, you might recognize this guy from our low back episode. Um, but he is back in action in the lab, and this time we're post-op of a labral repair in his left shoulder. So um, this is something that you know Matt and I had been working with together for o over a year yeah. for some shoulder instability, um, and you know he was really working hard in his rehab and his training, and everything was going well. But he'd still have those moments of instability where the shoulder would kind of sublux suddenly, and it would set him back, you know, for a few weeks. And finally, we got to the point where. You know, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze anymore, and we had to go get that surgical intervention, or Matt had to go get that yeah. surgical intervention. Um, so you want to explain a little bit more about what we did, sur what you did surgically, and where uh, we're at now? Yeah, I mean, the MRI spoke for itself. Yeah. Like, I kind yeah. of put that off for as long as we can. Right. And once it, it revealed, like, a pretty significant labral tear, it was technically a slap, but it was mostly posteriorly, and yeah. it just was one of those things that it needed surgery to be corrected. Right. Otherwise, the rehab wasn't really going to work enough so but you know I will say that I, I do believe and I think you know you can confirm this but all that work that was put in prior to the surgery led to a much better surgical outcome so we're eight weeks post-op yeah. and this is like the fastest rehab that I've ever been a part of I think you know he's moved along every step of the way you know we were on top of treatment right from the jump uh, we had our plan that we were going to do post-op going into the surgery so again for those of you out there who might be dealing with some shoulder stuff and you're contemplating surgery, do the physical therapy first, do the rehab or the prehab first, get yourself as strong as you can and as stable as you can before you go under the knife and then the proof's in the pudding. You're gonna see some really cool stuff today in terms of how we're gonna take him from the table to the gym. So let's get right to it, all right? So go ahead and lay on back, take your shirt off, Matt, and let's, uh, let's get this party, let's get this train rolling. Um, actually, before we do that, sit up, face this way. I just want to do a quick little overhead screen. So one of the things I like to really look at when I'm evaluating a shoulder, um, there's a few things that you, we need to keep in mind. So Matt, let's bring your chin down to your chest. So for Matt, right, this is his C7 vertebrae, the, the one that's protruding the most. And if we go right below that, T1, T2, and across that line, you'll see that his scap sits right there. So he sits in a lot of scapular depression in his normal posture. And what we'll see with that scapular depression, bring it up, Matt, is that his clavicle, his clavicular angle is pretty much parallel to the ground. He's got this long sloping upper trap. He tends to feel like his upper traps are always tight. Um, again, this shoulder is in a lot better shape than it was, you know, you know, eight weeks ago when he had the surgery. You can still see his portal sites. Um, this is something we've been really working on in terms of his scar mobility, which we will see today. Um, but he also tended to have a lot of anterior scapular tilt and that kind of created that you know uh, postural issue where he was getting some rotator cuff impingement type symptoms you know getting some bicep referred pain down into his bicep so these are all things that we've been addressing from a scapular perspective while we're waiting for that labrum to kind of heal up over the last eight weeks so yeah let's see a little overhead movement sure Right, yeah, that, dude, that looks awesome. That looks really good. So I wish it was a little bit more wonky for you today, but I'm really glad it's not wonky because it's good for Matt. Yeah. But, you know, again, so we come on back down. What I'm looking for is good scapular delivery. Okay, the way down, nice and slow, looking good, looking good. Nice job, man. You know, even on your downward rotation, that control is money. Uh, it's almost better on the left than it is on the right. But so what I'm looking for is, let's go one more time. You can go a little quicker. I'm looking for good upward rotation and protraction, right? That inferior border should be coming down right up underneath his armpit. That's telling us that we're getting good socket delivery on the rib cage, and that's gonna put his glenohumeral joint in a much better position, right? So when he was pre-op and he'd have that flare up or that moment of instability, all of this surrounding musculature would kind of lock up and this shoulder blade would get really chunky. Yeah. You know, he'd go into a lot of anterior tilt and, you know, scapular dyskinesis where he had really poor separation between the movement of his shoulder blade and his glenohumeral joint. So really kind of attacking his lat and his teres, some of these uh, surrounding musculature really helped us kind of reorganize or repattern his shoulder. And that's again, what we're going to kind of go over once we get into the weight room. Okay. So let's, uh, that looks pretty good, Matt. So we're going to kind of continue along the same treatment path that we've been doing. So lay on back. 
So we're gonna start with a little bit of pec minor work and some pec work. So I'm gonna lube them up here. So I like to just start with just, again, basic effleurage. Okay, I'm establishing some intent with my strokes here. I don't wanna just like, you know, go right for the elbow, right for the throat. You know, it's been a, a, a while since I've worked on that shoulder, probably about a week or maybe a little bit more than that. I think like maybe 10 days. Yeah, 10 days. You know, so the first thing I like to do is just, again, just establish my intent. I'm just, you know, probably in that mild to moderate pressure range, kind of working through his pec major. You know, uh, I try to use just enough lotion to get some nice slide on the skin without getting too much slippery. You know, you want to have a little bit of drag so that we're actually improving some of that fascial mobility while we do this. So I'm bringing him into that, you know, horizontal abduction. So bringing that away from midline. Using that glenohumeral joint is kind of like a, 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 as a lever so I can load this pec tissue. How's that feel, Matt? It's tender. Nice. It's a little dense in here today. A little bit, uh, yeah. a little bit toned up right now. That's what the two adels will do. Right. There you go, man. That's all right, though. We're getting after it. Right. And from there, you know, we can start to work him into some external rotation patterns. All right. So kind of like this pin and stretch technique. You know, I'm doing this passively for him, but you could do this actively too. Have him provide the movement. You know, for a longer treatment, I like to do some passive work because it just saves him some energy, um, allows him to relax and just focus on his breathing, which is a huge key. You can notice that Matt's doing a really good job of that diaphragmatic breath, right? Because we want to engage that parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so if he's holding his breath, if I'm using a lot of pressure and it's really painful for him, we're just going to set off his adrenaline response and then any kind of benefit from this manual therapy treatment is going to go out the window. So it's really important to coach your clients up on breathing. Um, luckily for me, I don't have to do that with Matt all that often because he's very, very in tuned with this and he's very used to these kinds of treatments now. This is your second appearance on session sit-in too, man. Jeez. No pain face. That's the no bad. pain face. That's it. Yeah. Working into that external rotation. How's that feel? Dude. Feels fine? Yeah. Good. You know, one of, the se one of the secrets to, I think, some shoulder rehab that a lot of people miss is this subclavius, okay? Like getting up underneath this clavicle and kind of on these first rib attachments, okay? So you got some of your deep neck flexors attached down in here, but this subclavius can really influence some medial rotation of the scapula. Uh, and so getting in that subclavius and giving it some love can really help kind of open up some of this good posture that we want to see or, or allow that athlete to kind of get that like posterior tilt back in their shoulder blade. Nice job, buddy. You know, and obviously the pec minor doesn't attach to the humerus, right? It attaches to the coracoid and the scapula. So, you know, by ranging his arm into that horizontal abduction, I'm not really loading the pec minor, but what I can do is influence some scapular retraction like this, right? So I'm giving him a little bit of traction on the shoulder. And as I range him back, I'm influencing a little bit of retraction so I can load that pec minor tissue, okay? You know, and as I've kind of been working on him for the last few strokes, I'm obviously increasing my pressure. You know, that graded exposure, start of off really light, get him acclimatized to the pressure of the stroke, and then you can kind of work a little bit deeper as you go. We're really looking for that hurt so good. We don't want to be at above pain threshold. We kind of want to be just beneath that pain threshold. All right, so now we're going to get into this bicep work, okay? So again, for the same reason I like to address that pec minor subclavius connection, the short head of your bicep also attaches to that coracoid, so it can become a scapular tilter. You know, Matt also reported to me that he felt like his bicep was a little bit tight. Is that correct? Yeah. You're feeling like a little bit bound up in there? Yeah. You know, and that could be protective tension or that could just be, you know, a symptom of, you know, the shoulder's instability and his body trying to create some stability by going into a little bit of tightness there. But in any case, we're going to work on his bicep as I work him into elbow extension. I feel like, I feel like I noticed it more after doing goblet squats where I, I haven't loaded like that as, right. as much. So I'm doing the rack carries. Sure. The goblet squat too, kind of. So holding the weight like this, you feel like yeah. maybe that bicep started it's grabbing up more, on you a little, a little bit. More than normal. Sure. That's okay. And then right, you know, again, to be expected, you yeah. know what I mean? You're really focusing on keeping those shoulder blades back. Again, not a tremendous amount of pressure, just kind of like probably if I had to rate my pressure on a scale of zero to 10, I'm probably in like a four or five right now. 
So in that moderate range, working nice and slow, we're trying to talk to those Ruffini nerve endings, right? Those mechanoreceptors in the tissue that can help us tone down that musculature beneath the skin in this area. Nice, dude. Beautiful. Awesome. Now, right from there, while he is still laying on his back, I can also start to bring in some of this teres and sub, uh, subscap work. You know, I do like to do some subscapular work with my shoulder clients, you know, especially clients that are having difficulty with that upper rotation overhead, because I feel like that cleaning up that gliding surface at, at the subscap can really help with that scapular delivery, right? If you've got some Velcro-y or sticky tissue under that subscap, you're gonna see a limited upper rotation and protraction as you get the arm into the overhead position, which can definitely leave the glenohumeral joint vulnerable to some issues. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time in there, not too much today, you know, because he's got, he's got really good external rotation, you know what I mean? So we're not doing this to improve his external rotation. This is more just to improve those sliding and gliding surfaces. How's that, man? Okay. Yeah. Tender in there? Not like uh, like three weeks ago. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, what you'll notice too, you know, this is something I like to do with my post-ops relatively quickly. Not that I'm going to go cranking them into external rotation, but keep in mind when, when you have a post-op shoulder that's been immobilized in this position for weeks, that this external rotation, all of those internal rotators are going to start to kind of bind up that fascia is gonna start binding up because you're in that position for an extended period of time. So just getting in here, even if you're not gonna do the range part, right? So if you can, if you can comfortably bring that client into the, this position, you can then access that subscapular space and just kind of spend a little bit of time in here. Oh yeah, yeah, I found a spot. <laughs> Again, this isn't, you know, a nice massage in here, guys. This is my fingers in his armpit. This is a sensitive area. I would ar urge you to use caution through here. There are some delicate structures. So communication is key with your clients. You don't want to go cranking away haphazardly in this subscapular space. But again, I've done this a few times, you know, maybe once or twice. So I kind of know where to be and where not to be. But if you're just starting this out with people, you know, make sure that you're communicating. We don't want any numbness, tingling, burning, or any ridiculous symptoms down to the arm. We want to make sure that they're feeling comfy. And if, you know, if it's a little painful, be sure to give them a break. Again, we don't want to set up that adrenaline response. I did some strokes in that subscap. What I'm gonna do now is actually work on some glenohumeral separation by getting up into his teres major. Okay, so we're gonna do is kinda, of, again, get a little lotion up under here. And again, I like to do this passively too because I can almost get him a little bit of a stretch, right? So if I kinda of get my hand up in that armpit and then gently range him in the scapular plane, what you'll notice is as I get him here, I'm actually pinning down that inferior border of his scapula. So I'm not allowing it to upwardly rotate, which you would think is kind of counterintuitive, but it gives me the ability to give him a nice little kind of Terry stretch right in that spot as I finish that stroke and let that shoulder blade come all the way through. How's that, Matt? Does that feel okay? Yeah, it's comfortable. Nice. Again, we could work him into an active technique here too. So hold on to that mat, right? And go ahead and range up overhead. So I could use two hands and have him do that. Or we can just have him range straight up overhead like this as well. Both are acceptable. I just find that I can control this a little bit better and take my time and it allows him to relax. Nice deep breaths, good. A few more in here.
beautiful. Okay, so now that we've done that, while he's still laying on his back, I'm gonna actually grab my instrument. All right, this is the rock blade. Uh, this is the mullet, okay? So this is a stainless steel instrument, medical grade. And what I'm gonna do is use this tool to kind of downregulate his pec by working deep and slow with it. Okay, so I'm not gonna go like crazy fast. I'm gonna just spin nice, deep, slow strokes. In terms of depth, again, like between that five and seven on the graded exposure scale. Is that uncomfortable, dude, or is that okay? No, it's okay. Awesome. Maybe a little bit different tactic than you've seen me do in the past, but one that I've been finding a lot of success with recently. So don't be afraid to evolve your techniques. You know, we're learning a lot more about how the nervous system really does play such a huge role in the reason why things like instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization or just manual therapies in general work. You know, it's more of a software thing than a hardware thing. So I'm not breaking anything up when I do this. What I'm really doing is talking to those deep mechanoreceptors in the tissue and essentially I'm speaking their language. You know, I'm, I'm down regulating that muscle tone by speaking preferentially to those mechanoreceptors in the tissue. You know, so now that I've done his pec, what I'm going to do now, right, so that tissue is nice and warm here. You know, we, we spent about, I don't know, 90 seconds or so working on that. So now I'm going to kind of butter up his biceps. So I'm doing a wet prep with him. Um, again, I, I feel like for the deeper stuff, having a little bit of skin glide is okay. This is the rock blade mallet. So we're going to go nice and slow. Same thing. I'm going to bring his elbow into a little bit of flexion. And we're going to go nice and slow to down regulate that bicep. How's that, Matt? I feel it. A little bit more tender here? A little bit. So I'm gonna back off a little bit, okay? What do, would you say on a scale of zero to 10 where we're at right now? Maybe like a three or four. Okay. So I'm gonna try to get him up to like a five. How about that? About a five? Yeah. So I think that's a pretty good spot to start. And don't be bashful. We can throw some movement in here too, okay? So I'm not trying to crush him. Just kind of slowly work that bicep, tone it down a bit. Yeah, just throwing it in, you know, yeah. again, just influencing different um, different uh, length tension relationships through the bicep. Yeah. So, you know, I like to throw in some pronation at the end, some supination at the end, just kind of change that vector yeah. slightly. Kind of gives me a, you know, it's just a novel stimulus for the tissue. So just mixing it up a little bit, it's just giving your nervous system something new to respond to. Cool. You know, we can spend a little bit of time doing some like light strumming right through his bicep tendon. You know, if he's getting some bicep tendon pain, which he's not, just for the sake of demonstration, this like light feathering technique, just really light, you know, in that zero to maybe three in terms of graded pressure and just kind of working pretty quickly, okay? Now we're kind of speaking to those Pacinian corpuscles in the skin, which are really great for helping to reduce or mitigate some pain. All right, now we're gonna bring him up overhead. So in fact, while he's on his back still, I'm gonna do some work through his serratus, okay? For the same thing, I wanna just kind of bring some blood flow and some neurosensory input to this area so that stimulate some better activity through the serratus, which is gonna help us with our overhead scapular delivery. How's that, buddy, all right? Yeah. You know, the rib cage area is sensitive, okay? You don't wanna go crushing through the rib cage. Um, you know, it can definitely be uncomfortable. So again, communicating with your client, just working through that serratus. Again, like a 60 to 90 seconds is about that sweet spot. You know, notice I'm holding this thing much like a pencil. You know, I'm not trying to crush him with this tool. You know, I'm not grabbing it like a brass knuckle and having at it. So it's gonna be a nice, gentle pressure. Now what I'm gonna have you do, Matt, is lay on your side face that way. Okay, put the tool down. Give him a pillow here. There you go, how's that? It's good. Good, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do now, Matt. I wanna start working into some overhead patterning while I work this, rever no, the rear part of your lat and that teres. Okay, so bring that elbow out straight. And while you're reaching, while you're ranging up overhead, I really want you to reach with that serratus there, okay? And come up all the way overhead, okay? Cool. 
So what I'm gonna do here is kind of again, get them on both sides. I don't like to use my thumbs a lot, but I'm gonna do this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Again, reach up and he's just bringing that tissue through range and I'm just kind of pinning it, okay? So I'm gonna provide the pressure, he's gonna provide the movement. I'm gonna let him recoil on the way down and I can feel his infraspinatus and his cuff is a little bit toned up right now. So I'm gonna work on just gently releasing that tissue. Nice deep breath, nice job, buddy. Beautiful. You know, normally instead of my thumb, what I really like to do, and I'll show you what I actually do in most of my sessions, is actually use the wipe of my forearm, like my ulna, um, because it's giving me more surface area, and it's also taking some stress off my hands, okay? You don't want to be using and abusing your thumbs and fingers, especially for thick tissue like the lat in this underarm area. So I'm using my forearm, but again, you can see how it's not as easy to see what I'm doing when I do it like this. A couple more. And exhale, good. Reach, 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 beautiful. And I'm taking that stroke all the way down into that lat, okay? Nice job, buddy. Okay, one more, last one. Reach, reach, reach. Beautiful, okay, good, okay? So the next thing we're gonna work on is again, I'm, I'm feeling through those last few strokes that this infraspinatus definitely needs a little bit more love. So what we're gonna do is have him start in this uh, abducted position and he's gonna go into internal rotation and adduction as he comes across midline, just like this actively. How's that feel, fine? Yeah. Okay, hold there. So from here, I'm just gonna kind of, again, pin that infraspinatus down about a five on the, on the out of 10 scale here. Nice, dude. Little click. Just little clicking? Yeah. Okay, is it painful? No, not at all. Okay. I'm just not used to clicking. It's been yeah. Too well, that's probably because I'm resisting some of your scapular movement. Two more. All right, so now that we finished doing some of that release work, what I want to do is actually kind of, I want to upregulate that rotator cuff. I want to bring some stimulation to that rotator cuff while he's getting serratus activation. So the way I'm going to do that is use this floss band. So I'm going to give this to Matt, and he's going to protract against that band, okay? This is just giving him some feedback. It's giving him something to push into, and then as he raises up overhead, I'm going to change that vector so that I'm kind of in line with his arm the whole time. So I'm bring it back down, Matt. Again, when you're on the way back down, though, I really want you to continue to reach and don't let that shoulder blade just kind of wonk back into place, okay? So I'm going to go back to the, the mullet here and use this convex edge. Go ahead. And I'm just going to gently strum that tissue as you range overhead, okay? How's that feel? Interesting. And reach forward, reach forward. Is that too challenging for you? I'll no. back off on the pressure. Good. It just feels stable. Nice, dude. That's how I was feeling. It hasn't been in a long time. Yeah. Right, so we're just working through, you know, again, about 60 to 90 seconds. Push, push, push. Reach with that shoulder. Reach with that blade. Reach, 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 reach. Again, just novel stimulus to the tissue, okay? He's doing the work, he's doing the patterning. I'm just providing some sensory input to elicit a response from his nervous system, okay? And relax, good, that's nice, okay? Nice job, buddy. The last thing I want you to sit up face me. Okay, so we're gonna finish this treatment today by working on his upper trap, okay? So for Matt and for anybody who's in scapular depression, I'm not gonna, have him stretch this upper trap a ton, okay? It's already locked long in the sense that even though it feels tight, he's in scapular depression, meaning that that distance his upper trap has to cover is a little longer. So stretching the crap out of this isn't necessarily gonna make it any better. In fact, it'll make that scapular depression thing technically worse, okay? But what I do like to do is actually do some soft tissue work through here, again, just to tone this thing down a little bit, okay? It'll allow some of these other scapular movers to 
get a little bit of juice from the nervous system instead of the upper trap trying to do absolutely everything. Again, this is another great opportunity for him and I to work as a team. I'm gonna use that forearm, right, so I can cover more surface here. You're gonna rotate your head to the right and then chin down and then back up, right? So he's gonna kind of, again, go through some range of motion in his neck while I just gently work through that tissue, nice and slow. What you'll notice with my other hand placement too is that I'm not allowing him to go into this crazy medial rotation. Not that he's doing it, but you'll start to see a lot of people as they range through into this thing, they'll drag that backside shoulder with them. So what I'm doing is using my left hand to post him up there to give him some feedback and my right forearm is actually loading the tissue. This allows me to kind of sense like as he moves his neck, does he get a, comp a compensatory movement out of his shoulder as well, which he's not doing right now, which is great. <laughs> Again, graded exposure. I'm just gonna kind of get him to climatize to the tool before I start going really deep with it. In fact, what I may even do is switch up gears and go back, back to the mallet, which is a little heavier and it's got a nice uh, beveled edge. It's a little bit softer as I work some of these deeper strokes. How's that feel, buddy? Good. Really not that tender. Great. I've been doing like a lot of a lot of shrugs too. I think that's great for you. You know, with that scapular depression, I definitely think shrugs is is on the ticket for you for programming. Yeah. And that was a, a little thing. traction on the shoulder is nice and therapeutic too. Yeah. I was in like a like a static suitcase hold with like a heavier dumbbell, then I can mm -hmm. actually shrug. I'm definitely like trembling by the end. It was awesome. These scars feel awesome too. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So that manual portion is now completed. I'm going to wipe him down and we're going to do a nice rock taping application to kind of lock in what we just did. So the idea behind the rock tape is it's going to become kind of a slow drip of sensory input for him and his skin over the next few days and just kind of gives you that neurological hug, right? That feeling of stability and security. So it's a feel good thing. There's no downside to the tape, you know, outside of you got tape on you, <laughs> you know, so if you're, you know, going out to the beach or something, you're gonna have some tape, but it could be a really great conversation starter, <laughs> you know, why not? I feel like ever since the Olympics, it's kind of yeah, almost it's like, like mainstream. Yeah, absolutely. People, oh, I know what that is. What do you play in the NBA or something? Yeah, because I look like an NBA player. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. Stranger things have happened in sports, no? <laughs> okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to go into almost like a child's pose. So I'm going to tape him in the position that we're trying to lock in. So w instead of just having him hold his arm up overhead, I'm going to put him in a child's pose so that he can reach out in front with his arms on the table in a quadruped position so that arm isn't loaded, okay? So go ahead and get down in there. We're going to measure up the tape here. And what I really want you to do, Matt, is really shrug that up, getting that nice upper rotation. Let's keep that nice and neutral uh, from here. So I'm going to take this tape from the middle trap, go through his infraspinatus, and then kind of finish it up in his deltoid tuberosity so that we're influencing some uh, external rotation through that humerus. Okay, so that's in the middle trap. 
Just gonna lay that tape right on through the infraspinatus and around to that deltoid tuberosity. Just like that, perfect. Now sit up, face me, buddy. For this second piece, I'm going to, I'm just trim these ends off. I'm going to put them in an externally rotated position and just kind of match right on this deltoid tuberosity and bring this around the front. The purpose for this one is to influence a little bit more glenohumeral depression, okay? So he's not gonna get that crazy anterior translation. This is more for biofeedback. Is the tape actually preventing his humeral head from moving? Absolutely not, okay? This is a neurosensory input. It's a feel-good thing. It's giving his nervous system the sense of security, but it's also great biofeedback, right? So if he starts getting into a pressing pattern where he's excessively loading into that anterior translation, he's gonna feel that tension on the tape and it's gonna give him some feedback to not do that, okay? Because we don't wanna use his bicep tendon as a trampoline, okay? All right, so we're done with the manual portion. Let's head out to the gym and start working on some movement. I just wanted to say thank you guys for visiting me in the recovery lab. Uh, thank you to Matt for hanging out with us again and letting us use you as a great demo. Yeah. Uh, so this is another episode of Session Sit-In. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot. The support that we've gotten on the YouTube channel has been overwhelming. You know, we're definitely gonna get back to doing more of these videos. We have some more planned down the pipeline. You can follow me on Instagram at MikeStella underscore ATC. You can follow AMP on Instagram at AMP underscore athlete. Definitely check out the website, ampathletes.com forward slash recovery lab. Also, I just want to announce I'll be launching a personal website in the next couple of months. It'll be MikeStellaMovement.com where a lot of my teaching tours and some of the content's gonna have its own hub. But uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, please leave them in the description below. I will get back to you, I will answer them. And again, I just want to thank you guys for all your support and we will see you guys next time on another episode of Session City. Ha, ha, ha.